Number one, put God first. Put God first in everything you do. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. So stick with him in everything you do. Can you say without hesitation that God is first in your life? It's silly to say that we don't have time for God. And if we don't have time for him, that he's not first in our lives. Do you think about God and his goodness in your life? Do you take time to thank God for your blessings, even little ones? Live to please the Lord. Make decisions that are pleasing to God. So are you trying to find a place to put God into your schedule? Or would you be willing today to say, God, from now on, you're gonna be first and I don't care what else has to go or what I have to change, what I have to make an adjustment in. I wanna keep you first in my life in everything. Let me tell you, being a Christian just does not work out right if God is a sideline in your life. Never meet with other people before you meet with God. If you'll take time to acknowledge God, say, God, I need you today. Lead me, guide me, keep me on the right path. Not only will your day go better, but God will keep you from making mistakes. But until you find Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there will be always something missing. You can't rely on you because you will fail you every single time just about it's not about me it's not about my ability it's not anything about that it's all about Jesus it's not about what you have or what you don't have or what you wish you had or what you wish you didn't have it's all about Jesus that no matter where you are in your life right now if you ask God to forgive you of your sin and you repent of your sin God will come into your life forgive you of your sin you'll receive his life his blessings his life eternal and his life, life's plan for your life. Not my plan, I don't want my plan. Sometimes we just need to get over ourselves and actually realize that sometimes God actually has a better plan. God allows things that we don't understand, but I want you to know if you hold on to him, he'll hold on to you. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, even when you cannot walk, he'll carry you. When you don't get a miracle, you can still be a miracle. But this is what I've understood. In life, some people don't need you to preach a sermon, they need you to live one. And so when they see you living it, they can connect and identify with that. One of the ways that you can take an ordinary life and make it extraordinary is to learn to do every single thing that you do with and for God. Raise your kids for God. Let your marriage glorify God. Let your attitude glorify God. Let God into everything that you do. God believes in you. He's got hope for you. He's got a future plan for you. And no matter how many times you've messed up, God is willing to give you another chance and another chance and another chance if you'll just be serious about your relationship with Him. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy as he would try to whisper to you, God's not for you. God's against you. That's a lie from hell. I got news for you. God is for you. He's not against you. He loves you. He's on your side. Intellectuals are now jabbering that God and heaven are far removed and far away. God is as close as your next prayer. Ask Him 
for things that are impossible because with God nothing is impossible. Ask him to defeat the giants in your life because our God is a giant killer. Ask him to divide the sea before you and to bury Pharaoh and watch him turn your enemies into fish food. Ask him. Ask him to send fire from heaven as he did for Elijah and he will. Ask him to walk with you in the fire of the fiery furnace and be the fourth man in the fire and he will. He said you will walk through the fire and the fire will not burn you. You will walk through the water and the water will not drown you. Ask him. He's the God who cannot fail. He's waiting to show you great and mighty things. Pray, pray, pray. God in heaven wants you to have that power. That power is the ability to move mountains out of the way. Too little is spent in prayer and too much time is spent in talking about the problem. If people would just start to pray and stop talking about the problem, we would see phenomenal things take place. Prayer is the key that unlocks the gates of heaven and closes the gates of hell. Prayer has the power to cure sickness and disease. Prayer can shatter the shackles of misery and habit that are tormenting your life or the life of your son or daughter or the life of your husband or wife. Prayer does not need proof. Prayer needs practice. People need to worship more. You need to take more time. Not going to God and pray, Oh God, Lord, we've got this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. Forget about your problems. Go to God and just begin to worship Him. Begin to exalt Him. Begin to extol Him. Begin to call Him by His names. Talk about His greatness. Talk about how awesome He is. Talk about how mighty He is. All giants seem larger than they really are. You think you'll not be able to uh, get control over Whatever that giant is, it, it seems larger than it really is. It's not larger than our God. It's not larger than your Savior. Remember these five words. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. There is no giant so great that he is not greater still. It matters not where the road took you in this year or how your year turned out. I'm encouraging you tonight by the word of God. The Spirit says, call on God one more time. One more time we have, if we're here today, if you're here tonight, it is testimony that you have a new opportunity. You've got a fresh start right here, right now. We get to reboot. We get to do it again. We will not cure what happened in the past, for the past is irretrievable. But the future is available. See, the older I get, the more I realize that you can't take life nor moments for granted. I can deal, personally, I can deal with death better than I can deal with regret. Whatever I got to say to you, I'd rather say it. Whatever I want to give you, I want to give it. Whatever I need to express, I want to express it because the next second is not promise. All you have is the fierce urgency of now, right now, this present moment. You don't have long to get over whatever you're going to get over, climb over your inhibitions of fear. The clock is ticking while you are thinking about it. You are running out of time. There's a rush to do it. You have, when you woke up this morning, God gave you an opportunity. What could be a better gift than to get an opportunity? And what a tragic waste it is to have an opportunity and not use it. Not maximize it. Not live it to its fullest. And to assume you have tomorrow. How arrogant of you to assume that you have tomorrow. When in fact all you have for sure is right now right now 
Get it right, right now. Get it said right now. Get it done right now. Open your heart right now. Write the letter right now. Express the love right now. Because if you don't, I can tell you from experience, coffins can't hear. You know, don't, don't ever waste a day. You know, there's something really interesting about time. We all get the same amount in a day. Every day is 24 hours. And some people are very, very fruitful and effective. And some people just waste their time day after day after day. And that's a choice that we make. But there's one thing about time. Once it goes by, you never get it back. So how tragic it is to waste any day of your life. I think we need to live every day like it was our very last one and live it to the absolute fullest that we can live it. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference.